Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. So, I am with Alberto Maldonado. You might remember him from way back episode about assisted living communities. We're going to talk to Alberto about his thoughts on a canine caregiver here in their facility, their residence. And we also have mom. Can you say hi? Mom. That, that works. <laughs> what mom are you looking for? One's enough. Okay. <laughs> so in my conversation with the um, canine care, caregiver people, they were telling me about all of the various things a specifically trained dog could do for residents in a memory resident res, residents in a community like yours. They can help with breaking repetitive behaviors. Mm -hmm. They can help with anxiety mm -hmm. and they can help people, um, people with less severe memory issues. They can take them for walks and the dog is trained to bring them back. I don't know if that's more of a home caring kind of thing than a, a residence like yours. But I wanted to get your opinion on what you thought about the possibility of a dog being here. I'm not suggesting that you guys do it, I'm just yeah. asking. <laughs> well, we find that there are a lot of benefits of, of having uh, canine companions in our community. Um, ultimately, what it boils down for us is uh, the ease of transition. Um, in, in many instances, uh, as you can imagine, um, our, our residents are having a lot of difficulty with the transition process from moving from home to a new environment that's uh, that's apparently a bit more restrictive and not as open as where they used to live. I remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, honestly, if if having their canine companion with them is a a point of uh, of difference, then by all means, we we want to include that and we want to be able to allow them to have, um, you know, that that dog that allows them to to have a continuum of life that is that is good oh. for them. Um, you know, in many instances, um, you know, we're asked, do you accept dogs? And, and we just, we simply ask, is, is this a situation where, um, where the dog may be overbearing for the, for the resident? Um, you know, we want to think of the dog also in those instances. We want to know that they're being provided the care that they need. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, ultimately the benefits of, of having a canine companion are, are great. Um, obviously they serve other functions as well. You know, in our memory care unit, uh, we have residents who, who, in their past life, probably had dogs. Uh, and for those of, uh, of us that, that may know our memory care, we have residents who, who have, um, have conditions or behaviors that, that may need a little more comforting. And sometimes our canine companions uh, are, are, are the, the difference maker. Um, I, I know in, in mom's case, um, that was also something that we, we looked at. and Yeah, well, I've done that, that a lot of times. <laughs> I've yeah. had dogs all my life. Yeah. And so I take care of them and put them out and let them play for a while, and then I bring them back in. And, yeah. So. And, and having, having a, a companion, a canine companion, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure helped ease you know, your ability to live here because this is a change of scenery, right? Yeah. Of what? Change of scenery. This oh, is sure, obviously yeah. a different environment, and yeah. and having someone that comforts you is, is uh, I'm sure it's it's it's, uh, it's it's great to your lifestyle. It allows you to, to to not stress about some of the things that you've worried about. You know, I don't know what those things might right, be for you, yeah. but it definitely well, makes a no, difference. Uh, I we live fairly close to one another, so we mm. know each other very well, yeah. and, and we're we know where we're at. Yeah kind of thing yep. yeah so and I'm not concerned good I feel like if they would need help they have the right to call me or or her or somebody to get help yep so what is your thoughts on an actual trained dog to be a service dog to help with repetitive behaviors anxiety Lots of stuff. You know, we've never had a service dog in our community, but I would, I would venture to think that th this might be a, you know, a, 
although it's it's not a, a new concept, it, it might be a concept that, that assisted livings or any senior living may want to venture into in that this is an added help. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's so many benefits of having a canine companion, but to, 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 to what you're talking about, you know, when it comes to having an actual service dog that performs duties, uh, I think it's a great feature, and I, and I think that, um, you know, it even lightens our load in some instances, mm -hmm. you know. There are residents who, who have needs that go beyond what we offer. You know, we obviously cannot be with the resident 24 hours a day, and there might be a need for the remote, Mm -hmm. newspaper um, you know there's even service dogs that perform duties of opening refrigerators and you know those are things that I think would be um, would, would be best looked into in, in, in these type of environments I think the biggest challenge to having one is the expense of the training yeah. um, I used to work with police dogs I used to photograph them mm -hmm. and back then they were about 10 grand they, ca they came to the police departments 90% trained at two years of age at about 10 grand mm -hmm. and that was uh, 15 plus years ago so yeah um, I'm wondering I do know of an organization that's it's they're, tr they're trying to be a like nonprofit to pr help provide those these type of service dogs yeah. to communities like yours and so I don't know if I'm willing to dive into that because I have a lot of things I already do, but yeah. I see the benefit of it. And as I mentioned in the prior segment, I've had dogs all my life and I have golden retrievers and I did not know that they could be service dogs to people with memory issues. Yeah, I was not aware of that either, but I, I mean, now that we're talking about this, I think it would be a great, great thought. And, you know, I can imagine several of our residents just having overall... Uh, comfort in, in the lifestyle that they have if they were to have a service dog. I mean, I, I can I can see several of our residents who, who kind of live a, a linear lifestyle where they're coming from their room to the dining room and back to the room. You know, these are people who would benefit from having a canine companion living with them. They can talk to them. I, I don't know if, if there would be direct benefits of of slowing the you know the the Alzheimer's or dementia process but I imagine that there would be some stimulation associated to having this type of, of companion my thought is it would be useful now I don't know how many assisted living apartments are here 77 okay so if you had a service dog on this side mm -hmm. that helped with people here like picking up stuff for someone who's dropped something from their wheelchair or um, encouraging people to take walks and yeah. keeping them safe yeah and then also have one in the memory residence and then have some of the more able-bodied assisted living residents maybe help with the dog that's over in the memory now they're trained to live in the residence the dogs wow. yeah um, I have a hard time with that because you know of course I think of my dogs as family members not working pets yeah well they're not even considered pets they're considered a service animal mm -hmm. and they're different than pets but I just I don't know I want to investigate this a little bit more because I just I just see the benefit and I don't know if it's because I've had dogs forever or because I've worked with service dogs and that's why I thought I'd be it'd be fun to get your opinion yeah I also think um, you know something that we've never really looked at um, like security you know in general we don't necessarily have a security guard that's in our community but you know, if there were a service dog that, you know, was a community service dog, you know, I, I think it would bring comfort to our staff during the nocturnal hours of the day, um, and, and I think it would um, establish that presence. You know, again, a lot of times, you know, we we live in a in a part of the world where, um, you know, these where things can happen, and so it would always be, it would be a nice comfort to know that we have that that safety net. That's true. My girl dog. And again, I have golden retrievers, so these are the friendly clowns of the dog world. I'm not sure that they would be a good guard dog. Mm -hmm. But when she barks, when the neighbors walk by the front door and she can see them through the glass, she sounds scary. Yeah, there's presence. Yeah. yeah. So I would think it would definitely, it would turn some people, nefarious people off. But I also picture a not, you know, somebody during a service dog, they would live here 24 hours during the evening you know, the night if you've got somebody that's agitated or just needs extra comfort or attention yeah. dog could go snuggle yeah 
Yeah. Um, you probably don't have a lot of staff that wants to climb in the bed with the I'm resident sure. and yeah. snuggle. No. There might be some rules against that. Yeah. And I've also, I've seen service dogs have a direct impact on, um, not necessarily the senior population per se, but I, I know that they have a use within, um, you know, uh, individuals that, that have um, me mental disorders. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've seen that, you know, as opposed to using, you know, antipsychotics, that they are now reverting to the use of, of dogs as a form of comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, individuals that have the tendency of hitting themselves, they, they're using dogs for that purpose now too, so. I have a friend from high school who's got a blood sugar sniffing dog. Oh. Which is incredible because she'll feel fine and he'll alert and she'll be like, huh? And then bam, it yeah. hits her. You know, she either gets really dizzy or she almost passes out and that just blows my mind. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, they're just, you know, they're wonderful creatures for fun and comfort and enjoyment. But once I learned what they could do for people like us, yeah. mom, Hmm, probably something to look into some more. So I think I will do that for you, yeah, yeah, whether you want it or not. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's funny because I it, it sounds like a really viable um, option, uh, although I don't know how many companies look at it that way. You know, maybe they look at the the cons as opposed to the pros. Um, but I really think that that is something that should be considered. I almost think you'd need one that's obviously like the police dogs. You know 90 percent trained the, mm -hmm. the difference when the police departments get them is they're obviously trained for what that department does i worked with concord and it's a larger city about 125,000, but it's not a high crime city uh -huh. so one of the problems they had was getting dogs to actually bite on somebody because no. it'd be like oh hey they're over there i'm not i'm not grabbing that drug person um and people would see the dogs and be like, and just give up yeah. because you don't want to be bit by a police dog, trust yeah. me. So I would think a service dog for a residence, like one of the MBK residents, they'd have to have that additional training. Like what works good for the people that are here now? Yeah, so, it'd have to be specific to this environment. Yeah, I mean obviously yeah. trained for the environment, but then kind of like fine tune the training. That's probably yeah. the right term. Yeah, that would be. I think that's a new business that I'm going to get into now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Service dogs for assisted living. Well, <laughs> I'm going to check into it more yeah. for you. Yeah. I just wanted to get your ideas, your I opinion. I think it's a great idea. I never put any thought into it until right now. Well, good. Yeah. Glad I could yeah. educate at least one more person. Yeah, definitely. And so what do you think? Do you think it'd be fun to have a dog that worked here for you guys? I don't know. Where are you, Where are you going to be? Me? I work. I'm not a dog. I don't work here. <laughs> now, if the dog can balance out our accounting, then we'd be great. <laughs> well, leave the, it to you. The dog probably could do it as well as I could. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to see the two two, two dog mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and not biting and screaming. And <laughs> That's and right. Yeah. That's my right. dogs bite each other, yeah. but it's because they're playing. But I wouldn't give up my dog for anything. That's true. So. Um, okay. Kind of like with when I when my my mother passes away, some somebody will say to me, "Well, you need to take care of her." And I said, "Yeah, I'm doing it." And he said, "No, I said, I think you need to take care care of it all the time." And I thought, "That's the dumbest thing you can think." <laughs> Oh, who this person was. Oh. We have five minutes to go upstairs to get your hair done. Well, yeah, maybe it was. I don't remember. It's been quite a while. It sounded good. It sounded like it went pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah.